Okay. So Mia, how about Mia if we wait on that article until later on? And you can bring that up. Maybe we'll oh. start start out with something from the text. Um, did did you have Mia? Did you have anything from the dialogue? Um, other than just like kind of are you talking about just kind of like what my opinions are, kind of just my thoughts and stuff right now? which argument of crido i think i asked did you like best and which right 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 okay yeah yeah um i'm gonna pull up notes really quick if that's okay because i took but i believe my favorite one from him was let's see let's see let's see oh the one where he says the one about how he was betraying his children okay. by essentially not wanting to escape just because and I kind of talked about this with you before class, but it was just, maybe this is kind of how I was raised, but how I think is just, if you make the decision to become a parent, and especially now that I know that Socrates' kids were, you know, at a young enough age to where they require intimate parenting, then you need to do everything in your power to be a parent and put your children first, because if you don't, then I mean, yeah, you you are orphaning your children, and that he Crida was right in what he said about that. So that argument, I did really, I, I really kind of resonated with. I really enjoyed it. I think it made sense. It also makes the situation complex, right? right? Remember, liberal education is about patience with complexity and ambiguity. Right. Okay. Good. Uh, did either one of the other of you pick that one as a toughie? Okay, so that was uh, Crito's best argument. Okay, Melanie, what did, did you decide what Crito's best argument was or what his worst one was? Um, let me look, I have it pulled up. Um, hold on. Oh, I do. I think his worst one is people would not believe you refused to escape. They would think I was too cheap to get you out. <laughs> I hate that one. Um, I don't know. I just, it reminds me of um, like the whole thing in politics right now, um, where like the wealthy are at the top of the chain and the poor at the bottom. It just kind of reminds me of that. So I don't know. I just didn't like that one. <laughs> well, what does that say about the rule of law in Athens? Does anybody care about it? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> right? I think if that's his main concern, then no. What that means is everybody, liberal or conservative, expected him. Nobody expected that Socrates would follow the decision of the jury. Yeah. Right? So that's important, right? Because you have a society based on the rule of law where nobody respects the rule of law. That, and that's, I think, what Mia is getting at, right? Everybody, whoever gets accused of anything, probably has one family member or one friend that would be tempted to do whatever they could to get them out of there, right? So, but if that's true, you don't have the rule of law. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's difficult. It's, okay, so as an adult, you need to live with that difficulty and that complexity. That's just something grown-ups need to always be aware of right? That if you want to follow, I've thought of that. What if I knew my children had broken the law? Would I take them to court? I can't say I would, okay? <laughs> right? Not only that, but a lot of people would be really critical, right? including probably my kids. I mean, it would be very difficult. What do you do if you know that someone in your family broke the law and nobody else knows? 
Okay. Yeah. Is that what you're getting at, Melanie? Yes. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Okay. Jack. Um, I think his favorite or my favorite argument was um, that he could go other places where people would accept him. Okay. I think he should have just left, honestly. <laughs> what was his answer to that? Or what do you, hey, Mia and Melanie, what do you think? Well, for me, I don't know. It, uh, I personally don't think that he should just like run away. Is that kind of what that means? Like, I'm assuming, I'm trying to remember that quote. I'm assuming it was like saying that uh, whenever Socrates could escape, he could just go where other people would accept him, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't think that running away would be good because to some extent, like he he's always going to be in hiding. And just like, what kind of quality of life is that? It cannot be good. And that was kind of my opinion, I don't know. Well, what's your answer, Jack? Um, he could have gone to any other country. No, wait, that's not true. Why not? He says, if I go to any country that's well governed, they'll send me back. Okay. Right? The only countries I could go to where I wouldn't get caught would be poorly governed countries like Thessaly. And that's true. <laughs> So what's your answer to that, Jack? He could just go to one of the islands somewhere. Not, they're all governed and everybody would know who it was. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, so what I'm getting at, if someone broke, if you broke the law, Jack, and you had a chance to escape, where would you go? I don't know. In modern, <laughs> modern times, I don't know. <laughs> if you tried to go to Europe, some well-governed country, you know, a developed country, they'd send you back. Right. So you could maybe go to Papua New Guinea in the, you know, the hinterlands back in the rainforest and raise your kids there. Is that what you want? No. That would be your choice, though, right? I think a lot of students... Really, their first reaction is, I get out of there. And then you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. OK, you got to think think it through. What about you, Melanie? Um, I mean, it sucks that he is in this situation just because of what, you know, what he believed in, what he was talking about. Um, I would love for him to be able to escape and be successful at it, but I don't think that there's a way that he could. Um, I don't know. So I guess I would say the best thing that he could do is try to, um, what's the word? Uh, like, I guess try to get people together and, and, <laughs> you know, go against the government and prove them wrong. Well, he had a chance to defend himself. That's what the, you know, the argument to the laws, right? You did have a trial by jury and you chose to, to defend yourself. You didn't hire a lawyer. And then you even had a choice to get banished. And then you said, you know, Oh, you had a choice just to be silenced. And you, and you said, no, I'm not going to stop doing this. Then you had a choice to get banished. And you said, but anywhere else I go, I'd get in trouble all over again. Um, if it were organized enough for me to go out and ask people questions. So what about this activity that he engages in? Meeting up with people and asking, haven't you ever been in the middle of a group and you, you know what the Socratic question would be? Something like, do we really wanna do this? 
is this really right? Have you ever been in a situation like that? Can you anticipate being in a situation like that? I mean, I know none of you go to drinking parties or anything, but you know, some other lion students do. It's always somebody else. Well, what if you actually know you were there, you saw how drunk these two were and they left, and then you find out one's accusing the other one of rape, right, or assault. You gonna bring it up or not? What if you find out some of your friend, your friend cheated, right? The honor council, you're gonna rat on your friend. I can't believe you guys haven't anticipated this, right? Well, so like on the first one, I mean, was something so serious? Like if if it if we okay, if I'm understanding the situation right, like if you were the one who was, if you were there, you witnessed the entire thing. And it's an, it's a false accusation or it's a true accusation either way. Like you would need to speak out about it because either way, someone's life is being ruined. Now, like on the honor council thing, if someone cheated, no, I don't know. I think, uh, that's kind of more difficult because it's like, uh, well, no, I mean, I don't know. I know you're supposed to be, I should probably be like, of course I would, but I don't know. There are bigger things I think that people should worry about than if someone cheated, like the first situation. Yeah, except that if you don't report cheating, you don't really have an honor code, right? I guess that's true, yeah. You don't really have the rule of law. So, and then the other one, yeah, somebody's life is ruined. Whose? The girls or the guys? Depends. Or, I mean, if it's a false accusation, then the... If it's false, but what if it's not false, right? Yeah. Somebody's life is ruined, but like, which one? <laughs> or maybe both, right? Right. It's, I mean, I just want you to start thinking that there will be various times in your life where you will get caught in these kind of situations, I think, unless somehow you're miraculously, um, you know, lucky. Um, all right. So what about Melanie? Your, what other point did you want to make? Um, I wanted to talk about my favorite um, response of Socrates. He said, a good person will never injure anyone. This includes retaliating or injuring someone else as a response to being injured by him or her. Um, this was just the response that made me like Socrates so much because, you know, I say this all the time, good people don't hurt others. Um, and I, and when he says, um, this includes retaliating, um, I don't know, that just, that stood out to me because that's so true. Like hurt people hurt other people. Usually a lot of the time hurt people are not good people, but yeah. Revenge, you don't get back. Okay, that's, I mean, Jesus also didn't take revenge, right? Um, well, what about the rest of you? Do you think that's true? You should say that you should never do wrong willingly. Yeah, I think the quote that I had was something similar. It was the one about how like you would never intentionally do wrong, like do wrong, like good people. It's kind of along the same lines. I was picking between the two for the, my favorite. And yeah, I agree. It's like you, you would, a good person will never intentionally harm someone. You're going to make a mistake, obviously, but a good person is also going to recognize that and just be like, oh, okay, this was an issue, like an accident, and I'm very sorry, and they're going to write that wrong. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I liked that argument a lot. Jack? I think that's true to an extent, but um, at some point you have to defend yourself. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so one person's self-defense is another person's revenge, right? Does that happen? People interpret something, right? One person's appropriate reaction is another person's overreaction. Is that, do you understand that? The same behavior would be interpreted by one person as um, vengeful and the, by another person as just self-defense. Does that make sense, Jack? Right, yeah. That's what they be, would be telling themselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Socrates, you know, people would say, well, Socrates, you're not injuring anybody, right? Right. Is he injuring anybody? I mean, not physically. Okay. Who does he or what does he think he's injuring? The government, the democracy. The rule of law, right? Okay, and so you need to think about that. He says, the laws are talking, right? I gave you, you know, you got your marriage license, which gives you benefits and it keeps you more secure when people attach their sexual behavior to some commitment rather than everybody just roaming around. And I, have, I educated your children. I protected you, you know, kept you secure and safe. I, um, you know, all these benefits that you got because you're living in a society under the rule of law. I gave you opportunity for citizen engagement in public life. I set up the agora. I set up your being informed about public life. I set up trial by jury. I set up all these things for you and you're going to undermine me, right? Does everybody understand that's what the laws would say? Um, well, what do you think, Jack? If somebody, he says, um, the laws didn't, yeah, I was injured not by the laws, but by men, the corruption of the people enforcing the law. The law wasn't unjust. The people making decisions were mis- applying the law right right so what do you where do you call the self-defense right i think he was just being persecuted by the by the leaders yeah but his choice is either to break the laws or not right right so so anyway that's always going to be an issue okay um, anybody else want to make a comment about the, the dialogue, about Socrates' comments or Crito's comments? Oh, I was just going to say, I kind of liked, like, Socrates' is, like, prioritization of, like, following the law or the, like, law, just because he had said something about how it's basically, like, what he was, like, born into, sort of, like, it's, right like it was something that he like grew up with and I just like really respect that because it's very in a way if he if he violated any more of the laws then it it's almost like a disrespect to his childhood because it's like how he grew up I don't know I don't know how to explain that really I just kind of oh I lost my train of thought but yeah yeah you have to start thinking through what is your relationship to the rule of law, right? The fact that you live in a constitutional government. Um, all right, so I'm gonna dress up like Crito and I'm gonna try to think like Crito, right? Okay. Crito is really mad. <laughs> oh boy, is he mad, <laughs> right? Nobody's telling me I don't like Athens. I love Athens. I love my country as much as anybody else. And I love my friends. And I love the gods. And I'm a good guy, right? But oh boy, that time in our history, we, we kicked those Persian butts and we got them out of here. But then we fought against Sparta. Again, those Spartans are a bunch of barbarians. Um, but 
hot damn, we lost that war. That was terrible. It was disgusting. We should have, we had terrible strategy. We let ourselves get controlled by Alcibiades. It was such a mess. Then Critias got elected, that horrible SOB was just power hungry. And so then we got rid of him and we got the democracy back. And then, oh my God, my best friend got taken to court by all these bozos. And then he got accused and then he got sentenced to death. What, what a mess, right? It's, it's all bad, it's all wrong. So the least I can do, because I'm a player, right? I have some, I have something at stake. I got some power, I got some friends, I got some money. And so I definitely, it's my responsibility to help my friend and I'm totally on board with this. And um, there's no way that those that are enemies uh, are allowed to do that to somebody like Socrates, right? Those bozos, they're just, you know, they're so corrupt and it just drives me crazy. So at least I knew I could get him out of there, right? And so that's what made it worthwhile to have the power and money I had is that I could or make the arrangements. I could, even I had friends of Socrates who gave me more money. So it wasn't about the money. I got the ship, I got all the arrangements. So, okay, Socrates, get your butt out of there. Go raise your kids. No problem. Um, uh, why did I like Socrates? He was a good man, right? And the conservatives hated him because he did want people to question and think critically all the time. And he didn't like blind obedience. The liberals hate him because he kept telling them they should be self-controlled and disciplined. And they should, if they should fight in a war, if it's a just war, and they should demonstrate and speak out if they think it's not just. And uh, everybody hated him, but I knew he was a good guy. He was the best guy. And so I definitely did not want him to get, um, it was awful that he got accused. It was awful that he didn't hire a lawyer. Like I could have paid for a really good lawyer and he would have gotten off, right? And then when he's defending himself, he doesn't even pander to emotions. He tells them he's not going to do it. He, bring, he doesn't bring his kids in. Like everybody's accustomed to that. So they just thought he was an arrogant SOB because he wouldn't play the game, right? He wouldn't play the game by the rules. And um, it's like he wanted to get accused. It made me so mad. But anyway, so then I did my duty, you know, I made all these arrangements and then he wouldn't even go, <laughs> which makes me really mad because then my enemies are going to say, you see, he really is a lawbreaker and he finally admitted it. And um, I just, I'm so annoyed. And here Socrates lets himself die. So he's dead. So now I have his kids on my hands and I, I need to raise his kids because he told me, you know, and I have the money, so whatever, but I'm still mad at him. He should have hightailed it out of there and hung out in Thessaly. Um, I was never persuaded by him. All right, that's Crito. Then Socrates, all right. Okay, so I'm Socrates, and I'm sitting in the, I knew that Crito was going to come. I knew it. It didn't surprise me at all, because the ship had been seen, so everyone knew I was going to get killed the, in a day or two. I knew that Crito would have made arrangements to get me out of there, because Crito is Crito, and that's his character. He doesn't have respect for the rule of law. He's a player. He, you know, neither the, the conservatives nor the liberals, neither one of them understood what Athens was about. That was the main thing. Freedom had meant freedom to live however you like. 
and and the Athenians didn't even know that wasn't what it was about. It was about living under the rule of law, electing the people who make the laws, uh, having an assembly chosen by lot so that the citizens vote on policy, also having a, a jury, citizen jury, so that citizens make decisions. So it was, it was genius, it was beautiful, but in order to make that system work, you have to live the way I live. You have to keep getting informed. You have to keep going down to the agora and find out what's being debated. You have to keep talking to people who basically either are self-indulgent or they're authoritarian. You have to try and talk them out of it. You have to give them reasons for why what makes Athens great is that it's a constitutional government, not like Sparta not like Persia, not like Thessaly, right? It's the best city. That's why I stayed here. Where else am I going to go? Um, and not only that, yeah, it cried out. He had this weakness, right? Because he was a big player, he was always aware of his public image, which is a corrupting influence. Um, and he never really understood me. He liked me, but he did not understand me. And I knew that. But yeah, I mean, he was my patron. <laughs> I would have really starved if it weren't for him. But I, he let me be myself. He didn't use his money to manipulate me. Um, but I know that he really did think I was an irresponsible parent. But I don't think I was. I think this is what I think, and this is what I want, Plato wants to leave you with, is that you have to really think through what it means by the rule of law. And you can't just do whatever you want, and then some family member, somebody you like gets in trouble and instantly you hightail it out of there. That just means Nobody respects the law and you don't have the rule of law. So then whoever can gain the most, most power, whoever can use the fanciest rhetoric and get people's allegiance and any sort of strong man who loves power will use rhetoric and the rule of law will disappear. So you really have to understand the price you pay for preserving a constitutional government. And that's especially true when you have children. Because here's the, every day when you have children, you wake up and you have to decide to what degree am I going to put up with the various injustices that I know go on? And to what extent am I going to speak out and become a public character and my children are at risk, right? So even though when I was in the Agora, people would talk to my children behind their, my back, or my children just knew that daddy is getting trashed out there. What's wrong with my daddy? Why don't people like him? Or, you know, maybe uh, they can't get a job or their teachers don't like them because of my daddy, right? Um, so your, your children can pay a price if you publicly speak out to any extent, right? But if you don't speak out, your society gets more and more corrupt and then they have to live in a more corrupt society. So it's every day you make that decision um, and you just have to be prepared that in, at any one time, something could happen. Your government could get really bad and you'd speak out and you know that your children would pay some kind of price. You know, their friends might say nasty things about, about their, their dad or something, but it's just, that is adulthood, and that's the price you pay for the rule of law as opposed to authoritarianism or chaos, right?
So you do have to think about that a lot. Um, I thought that I was the best citizen. This is exactly what every democracy needs, is to citizens to stay informed, to talk to powerful people, to keep asking them questions, to hold them accountable. So transparency, they have to say what they're doing and they have to say why they're doing it. And then, and they have to have legitimate reasons because when they're put into a position of authority, they can't be above the law. They have to show that they are in their position. They're following the, the description of the position. They're not using their position to break the laws. They're using it to enforce the laws in a way that promotes everybody's well-being and that they need to hold, be held accountable for every decision they make. And citizens need to also be transparent and accountable for the decisions they make. It, if some parent uh, panders to their child and um, gives them, you know, their goal is to give them their inheritance, pass it on to their children so their children can be lazy bums, right? That hurts everybody. That's not just a matter of opinion. You're free to do that. That hurts everybody. So um, the laws that require taxation so that everyone can get education or everyone can have a decent house, that's what you want in a democracy. Um, anyway, so I thought I was being the best citizen. I thought I was being the best parent because at the end of the day, if people would say why I died, what I lived for, and if they would just tell my children my version of what I was doing, the thing that really worried me wasn't so much how, wasn't, I mean, the worry I had was that Crito would tell my children, yeah, I gave your dad a chance to escape and he was irresponsible and he left you as orphans. That would be terrible, right? I, I hope to God that Crito would at least tell them my version of the story about why I died. But I don't know you know, and that left me, but I, it wasn't, I had no doubt in my mind that I was doing what every citizen should have been doing. And the fact that I was accused of being the bad citizen means how, shows you how corrupt Athens was and how everything was turned upside down. The opposite of what our founders had in mind and knew had to happen in order to preserve the democracy. Okay, so any other comments on the dialogue? And then we'll go to those news articles. Um, Melanie, any other comments on the dialogue? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, does that, did what I say, do you understand how you really have to keep that in mind the rest of your life? Yes. Okay, it's, there's so many Plato scholars that don't even think that. It's scary. It's scary how few Americans really understand this constant tension and what they have to do if they want to live in a constitutional government. Um, what about you, Jack? Any other comments? Oh, okay, what about you, Mia? No, oh, ma'am. Okay, well then, Mia, that's the next thing, is the guy who bombs the abortion clinic and the family protects him, right? That's, do, does everybody understand that's exactly the same thing? Like the, the family and friends have no respect for the rule of law. Does that make sense, Mia? Yes, ma'am. It's just a particular example and the people in the town were not helping the police officers, right? 
and they would right. call themselves conservative, but they don't respect the rule of law, which is conservative, right? Um, so what bothered you about it, Mia? It was just, like I kind of said earlier, it was just that one, like the ending of that paragraph where they were just saying, like their justification for supporting him and just not like helping the police and everything. Um, the one, uh, the, the anti-hero one, yes. It's like at the very bottom somewhere. Right. Yes. Rooting for the United States. Yeah, just like United States government. What? is that i don't know it's just like a i don't know a freedom fighter what I, that right. is not um, like just all of those all of that verbiage was just disgusting to me because it's exactly the opposite of that because he destroyed these institutions that you know like uh the the abortion clinics and the the gay bar i believe it was oh nightclub and like the olympics like all of those places like support freedom in some sort of aspect and they help to like they they support these individuals just living their lives in the way that they freely choose to do which is what america is supposedly supposed to stand for but then them saying that they're supporting the government is just a direct contradiction to that and it is also hypocritical because that is not freedom to destroy something that is promoting freedom I, icky to me hated it okay good did you have a reaction to this article um melanie my reaction was basically the exact same as Mia's. Um, I was going to make the same comment about where they said some people were supporting Mr. Rudolph. And yeah, I just didn't like the entire situation. Yeah. Um, so the word freedom is pretty ambiguous at this point too, right? Um, yeah, I mean... And I will send you, actually, I'll send you this uh, short quote about Plato in the Republic. So too much freedom leads to too much slavery because it creates so much instability that then a strong man takes over. And that happened in Athens, but Plato's just pointing out, it happens everywhere. It's just a constant, there's a constant balance between too much order and too little order and between uh, making laws that actually promote well-being and making laws that help the rich get richer or not making laws so there's too, too little order or applying them wrong or punishing, uh, over punishing people or under punishing, right? So a rich person gets accused but spends an, a night in jail a poor person gets accused and they're, you know, in jail for 10 years. So all, all, all those levels, the system can fall apart. And yet you still want the rule of law rather than the rule of one person and his buddies. Does that make sense, Melanie? So just, I'm sure that in your life, you will many times be outraged about our system the government, blah. But make sure you keep making those distinctions because the alternative is chaos and then a strongman, authoritarianism. Um, what about you, Jack? Did you have a reaction to this article? Yeah, I think um, what they're trying to say is um, there's both, there's two sides to the story. There's two sides, like, um, the Kyle Rittenhouse thing. Okay, the Kyle Rittenhouse thing. Okay. Yeah. Like, so why don't you make an analogy? Why don't you describe? So like one side thinks he's a murderer and then the other side thinks it's self-defense. So I think that's kind of what they're trying to say here. Yeah, because having those Mexicans come in is that it, that they were threatening? Wasn't that who he was defending himself from, undocumented workers or something? I don't know. I don't know the specifics, honestly. Oh, um, yeah, he killed, I think that's right. Is that right, Melanie and Mia? Actually, I, I could get that. 
Um, yeah, because he went into a Walmart or something and killed a lot of um, Latino people. And, and I think the lawyer argued self-defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard for me to keep track. There was that other, that other kid, was that Kyle? I mean, there was another guy who was at a demonstration with an AK-47 or something. Um, that didn't look like self-defense either, but okay, good. Um, any, did either one of you come up with your own example from more recently, more recent example? Um, it's, so Jack, if you wanted to find it, otherwise I can go try to look, but there's always examples um, that come up in the news. Mm -hmm. It's kind of depressing. <laughs> how many examples there are. But if you could find that some one person's freedom fighter is another person's terrorist, right? Mm. One, one person's preservation of freedom is another person's complete destruction of the rule of law, right? right. Yeah, okay. We're having trouble figuring that out right now. Um, Melanie, did you have an example? Okay. No, I did not think of one. Okay, bless his heart. Eric needs our help. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, he was a man who stood up for what he believed in, right? If he came to my door, I would have given him food and never said a word. Okay. Well, what if you believe in, what if you believe undocumented workers are destroying our country and so you should shoot up a number of them? I mean, if you do shoot them up, it's because you believe, you believe in what you're doing, right? I mean, at that point, it's just like you have la you have the lack of ability to control your emotions. So that's an emotional outburst. If you are letting something, I don't know, like I feel like if you are letting something that you like, if you believe that okay, undocumented workers are destroying our country, if that's what you believe. Like that's fine. I mean, well, I mean, whatever, that's your opinion, whatever you can have your opinion, but you don't need to necessarily act upon that to just eliminate undocumented workers from existence. Like that doesn't need to happen. Well, it's know. against the law to shoot them. Right. Well, so you can have your beliefs, but you can't break the law. Right. Okay. And then someone will say, but the laws are unjust. You know, there should be a law, right? But can you act on the basis of what laws you ought to have in place? I mean, the reason we have the system we have is that you get to elect the legislators and they make the laws based on either what their constituents want, so they get reelected, or what they think is what the country needs. Because sometimes their constituents' opinions are not what the country needs. But that's how you go through the system, right? Rather than just decide, well, I don't like that law, so I'm gonna go shoot some people up, right? If you don't like the law, um, write to your legislator, right? Write to your congressperson, uh, demonstrate, you know? Um, do it nonviolently. Does that make sense? That's how you change. That's how you change a constitutional government. Do you change the people running it through your vote or, and you engage in nonviolent, um, either just speaking out about something or, or you can all, always do some nonviolent way of breaking a law, like Martin Luther King, for example, there was a law, you cannot parade without a permit and then they wouldn't give him a permit for his parade. 
So then when he paraded without a permit, he got arrested, <laughs> right? But it was all nonviolence. And that was his way of saying, you know, the system is broken. And this is one way I want to change it is just to alert people to how bad it is. And so Black Lives Matter, 93% of the demonstrators were nonviolent. And they were pointing out the way that our system is rigged, which if you study it, it really is. And it has been for a long time. Um, but the, you know, they did it nonviolently. Now there are always some people who are violent and there were also some uh, police officers, off duty police officers who wanted it to become violent so that the public would go against it. And then they tried to incite violence. That happened with Martin Luther King's demonstrations also. I had some students who said, well, no, back in the good old days, Martin Luther King did it right, but the Black Lives Matter, no, no. <laughs> this is not so, okay? Because I was there literally demonstrating in the streets, all right? Uh, the percentage of violence in Martin Luther King's time was higher than the Black Lives Matter, incidentally, right? Just FYI, those, those demonstrations got pretty, pretty hairy sometimes. Um, so, um, so I guess that the point is, um, just to understand what it means to live under a constitutional government. What do you guys think when somebody talks about, oh yeah, I saw the National Enquirer had a, a headline, uh, deep state goes against the Donald, okay? So it's the Donald against the deep state. What do you guys think of that? What, what does that mean? You, I don't even know what that means exactly. Well, um, there was an inquiry, right? I mean, he was impeached a couple times and the right. witnesses were the FBI and you know all these people who work for government agencies who claimed that he broke the law, right? He engaged in extortion with the head of the Ukraine uh, government, that the Congress had voted to send military equipment to Ukraine. And Mr. Trump made a phone call saying, well, I'll send it, except you have to do me a favor first. You have to find some dirt on Biden's son, right? And that's actually against the law because the Congress had passed the money, right? It's not the president can't go in there and um, change that. And that was agreed on that it was against the law. The people who did not, who voted against impeachment did not vote against it because he had not broken the law, right? Um, so that's a case where People say the deep state hates the Donald, right? Well, what do you guys think? <laughs> it's a big issue, right? These are huge issues, right? We have the Mueller investigation. I read the Mueller report. I followed all of that stuff. Um, the obstruction of justice or 12 cases of it. I know the evidence for it. Um, then there's, I mean, it's just, do you think the election was stolen or not? What evidence do you have one way or the other? Um, who are the people who are claiming it was? What is their claim based on? Who are the people that say it wasn't? What is their claim based on? Um, do you guys know the arguments on each side? Not particularly. I, mm, 
I don't know. I have a very hard time just keeping up with it. It's always, there's always so much going on. It kind of stresses me out. So sometimes I, as much, as bad as this is to just not be involved, it's like, uh, sometimes it's nice to just hit that power button and just not know. Well, and it's hard for you to get good information, I think, right? I know that some of my students say, I don't know which sites to go to and everything seems biased, right? Um, so, so I understand that. I just, I'll, I mean, I'll just give you one example that one of the claims was that the, the voting machines run by a certain company, that that company deliberately messed up the count so that Biden would win, all right? I can't remember the name of the company, but anyway, Sidney Powell, that's what she said. She said that company is corrupt and they were favoring Biden. And so the company sued because, you know, that's they're they're going to lose a lot of business if they get accused of being a dishonest company, right? So they sued her for saying that. Does everybody understand that? That that's a legitimate um, lawsuit to discredit a company with no evidence in a way that does a lot of damage to the company's bottom line. Uh, it was not a frivolous lawsuit. Right? And do you know what her lawyer's defense in court was? Well, she's not guilty because it was so ridiculous that no rational person would believe it. So she shouldn't be held accountable for saying it. All right, guys, is that a good argument? Is that messing with the rule of law? When a lawyer deliberately accuses someone of something that they know is false? Right? I mean, you can get debarred for that, right? Because the legal profession has standards. And if you start undermining the rule of law as a lawyer, you're in trouble, <laughs> hopefully. Does that make sense to all of you? Um, but just like in Athens, like you could become a lawyer, you could have two different motives. One motive is to, you, is to wrap the system around your finger and learn how to speak persuasively and learn how to get juries and assembly members to be to make their judgments based on emotion or um, character assassination or anything but the facts and the evidence. So you can use your tools as a lawyer to completely destroy the rule of law and get people to vote on emotion. Or you can use your training as a lawyer to protect the rule of law and always to follow that you're trying to educate people in making rational decisions based on the facts and the evidence, right? So I, I do think as, as a teacher, I should tell you that you are coming to college at a time when lots of people are worried about whether our democracy is going to last because the rule of law is being undermined and that they might be wrong, right? All I'm saying is that history will say it was a big issue. And that's exactly what happened in Athens. That, that's what I wanna get at. That Athens also, the, if the um, citizens had lost their understanding of what it means to be a citizen in a, in a society governed by the rule of law. And it wasn't just freedom to live however you like. Um, does everybody understand that? Does that make sense to you? Um, Jack, does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think um, uh, Trump and uh, Bill Barr, I think they, they undermine the, the legal process. OK. Um, you know, at one point, I think it was Barr 
who said, you know, whatever the president says is what goes, you know. I, I'm not quite sure. I oh geez, I did used to follow that a lot. <laughs> um but the Mueller report was all about the Russian interference in the election. And it was hundreds of pages long. I can't, I actually, I read it. I have it. Here it is. <laughs> okay, here it is. All right, I read the whole dang thing because I thought if a student, you know, wants to talk to me about it, I don't know if you know anybody else that read the whole thing, right? And I just thought, okay, I mean, I can be a source. But um, I read it in the airplane when I was going to Greece. So of course it's relevant to my scholarship and all that. Um, but what I wanna say is that when it came up, it came out on a Friday afternoon, right? Of course, so that nobody's paying any attention. And by Monday morning, I think, or Tuesday, Mr. Barr came out with a four page statement saying, no problem, you know, didn't prove nothing. And he really, really, really misrepresented it. Um, he didn't even mention the second half, which was the obstruction of justice claims. There were 12 of them and there was overwhelming evidence and then the first half was just a distinction between um, having sufficient evidence and, um, oh, let's see, and saying that he wasn't guilty. There's a special word for that. Um, so Mueller said, basically, I don't think we have sufficient evidence to actually uh, prosecute him but that doesn't mean he's off the hook, right? But Barr and the Republicans, you see, he's exonerated. Okay, it, he wasn't exonerated, but that's how they, you know, they just blew that up. You see, it was all made up, it was all false. He came off scot-free and that just absolutely was not true. And of course, Mr. Barr knows the law, right? He knows the difference between being able to prove um, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt and saying he didn't do nothing, right? Does that make sense, Jack? And that, yeah, yeah and that's all documented, Mr. Barr. Um, anyway, but Mr. Barr didn't go along with claiming that the election was stolen. Do you know that? He just drew the line at that point. Yeah. And he is, yeah, I think this week he's coming up in front of the January 6th committee. He's not under subpoena at the moment. It's just his comments, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, just the main point is that this is the burden of living in a constitutional government is that you need to stay informed you need to know you could get falsely accused of something. You need to value the rule of law more. You know, you need to distinguish between is it the system that's corrupt or is it the people running the system that are corrupt? Because if you run away, you're destroying the system and you're not necessarily hurting the people who are corrupt because when you undermine the system, then those corrupt people, you'll just have a strong man and they will become his enablers. And so you will be, the country will be run by dishonest people. Is that, does everybody understand that? I mean, one of the reasons is my dad marched with Martin Luther King and Selma, okay? So here I am, I was 10 years old and I still remember all this stuff and my dad, People called him on the phone and swore at him. And he said, what is your name? And, you know, because he, he just hung up, you know, I'm not gonna listen to you unless you tell me your name. And, you know, they would use the N word and all that stuff. And um, so I remember if you were for the civil rights movement, 
you would get called a communist. All right? <laughs> that was it. Anybody who questioned our government was a communist, right? So my father was unpatriotic and he was a minister, which is outrageous because God is on our side against those atheist communists. You know, it's obvious. So he shouldn't be a minister, blah, blah, blah. So this is my whole childhood, okay? And my best friend in ninth grade, she says, you know, your dad is almost a communist. <laughs> I'm like, really? I didn't know that. Uh, and I had teachers. I had a civics teacher. And I know he didn't like me because my dad was the local communist. All right. And so I, I understand that. I mean, I didn't get a lot of flack. He didn't, he gave me A's because I wrote a lot of stuff and he, he wasn't going to punish me in terms of my grade or anything, but you have a straight A student and her teachers don't like her, right? It was, it was awful. <laughs> um, so I know how easily that can happen. And I was really lucky when my kids went to high school that the whole high school, the ethos, the values of everybody at that high school everybody at our church and everybody around us was the same whereas i had to grow up where what my dad was saying from the pulpit was the opposite of what people at my school were saying and and that was hard so um but i you know i didn't think my dad should shut up for that reason but um so i just <laughs> Does every, okay, so I just want to make sure you understand this. If you have kids, you really need to kind of get used to it. Um, it could happen, especially since where our country is going right now, I, I just, I worry about you <laughs> and the, what you're gonna have to deal with. There are all the indications are it's, it's going to be difficult, so. I want to give you these dialogues to prepare you and you go, oh yeah, that's just like Socrates. So Melanie, I'm glad you like Socrates and it probably won't take you long before you start going, I feel like Socrates. <laughs> um, so if any of you want to email me and say, hey, Dr. Beck, I had a Socrates moment today and then you can explain it and that'll be great. Um, any other questions or comments? Next time we're gonna do the classical virtues of Aristotle. And um, Socrates had all those virtues and you can come with your own examples. All right. So one of them is self-control in relation to eating, drinking, and sex, for example. That's pretty easy. Not too much, not too little. Find the middle ground. Um, and so I will let you go. It's just about 9.15. And I will read your posts sometime tomorrow afternoon or something. Let's see, any other comments or questions?